These are the new Chinese UCAVs, unveiled in a way that jolted even seasoned observers. Two completely new unmanned combat aircraft appear with radically different architectures. One with a lambda wing and wedge intakes, one with a rhomboidal wing and DSI bumps. The real question is not only how they fly, but why they exist at this size when no publicly acknowledged Western program aims for the same mix of scale, stealth, and speed. Until September 3rd, 2025 parade, these machines lived as rumors and blurred pixels. Their debut resets the conversation. Among several new systems, the focus here is the largest UCAV, informally labeled Type B, a fighter-sized, stealthy, single-engine platform with no cockpit and no vertical tails. No Western program has shown an operational counterpart. Reports point to six UAVs on display. GJ-11 returned, while Types A, B, D, and E were new. A seventh aircraft, probably Type C, was reportedly pulled late. Earlier satellite imagery hinted at a real airframe, not a mock-up. The configuration conveys intent. Length is near 17 meters, slightly longer than an F-16, and TOW likely in the mid-teens. As with other recent Chinese stealth designs, the vertical tail is deleted to cut radar signature. The fuselage shows pronounced chins and a flat belly, consistent with contemporary Chinese low observable shaping. The rhomboidal wing behaves like a hybrid. At high speed, it acts as a slender delta with strong vortices. At lower speeds, it resembles a highly tapered conventional wing. Several trailing edge surfaces are blended into the skin with no obvious hinge line, implying flexible cladding or seal gaps to preserve stealth. Seemingly all moving wingtips can generate yaw without fins, boost roll at high alpha, and trim lift for efficiency. Absence of leading edge high lift devices hints that close in dogfighting is not the primary job. Compared with a Lambda Wing Type A and its wedge intakes, optimized for a high mock dash, Type B trades some top end speed for broader flexibility in the transonic and low supersonic regime. A nose to tail look suggests a compact ASA, a composite air data probe, and provisioned, but perhaps not yet installed, electro optical turret under the nose. The landing gear is a conventional tricycle with serrated bay doors. Nothing indicates carrier hardening. Intakes are divertilous with an off-center bump reminiscent of the J-20, lighter, stealthier, and happiest around M0.9, 1.3. By contrast, wedge intakes, as seen on a Lambda Wing drone, favor higher Mach. The choice reinforces the impression that Type B is a long-legged, multi-role platform rather than a pure sprinter. Immediately after the intake sits a small transparent blister likely hosting panoramic cameras, with nearby fairings consistent with missile approach warning or distributed aperture system. For an uncrewed combat jet, 360-degree awareness enables self-deconfliction, autonomous countermeasures, and tight formation with manned teammates. At the wing root, a scoop suggests cooling for dense avionics. Thermal management is a defining constraint on stealth aircraft. High power ASA's electronic attack and onboard computing all demand heat sinks, often dumping waste heat near the exhaust where the IR background is hot. Belly panel lines imply an internal weapons bay for stealthy carriage of payloads. The single engine sits behind a faceted, serrated nozzle with clear attention to signature control. Pedal serrations break up plume structure. Slots and gaps likely bleed cooler air to mix with the core. Slab-like side fairings mask lateral views of the flame. If a WS-15 class engine is installed, thrust will be ample for sustained transonic crews. Twin longitudinal strakes flanking the nozzle look like plume blockers. Their differently toned tips could hide sensors or materials tuned for high temperature emissivity control. What missions justify such an airframe? It is not expendable. It falls into the exquisite but uncrewed category, survivable, networked, and designed to keep pace with frontline fighters. In a loyal wingman role, Type could extend a man formation's magazines and sensors, escort with extra BVRMs, perform stand and electronic attack, and deliver anti-radiation missiles to open corridors through dense IADS. Maritime strike emerges as a natural task. A stealth UCAV with room for a serious internal payload can carry long-range anti-ship missiles or targeting kits, exploit surface search radar modes, and survive against shipboard ASA arrays better than legacy strike jets. For counter-enablers, the same survivability can threaten tankers and AW, 
forcing them to retreat and compress the opponent's sortie generation. Everything hinges on communications and autonomy. A platform of this size implies robust multiband LPI slash LPD data links for line of sight, plus relay or satellite options for beyond line of sight control. Autonomy likely layers from flight control and deconfliction to sensor queuing and weapons logic up to human on the loop authorities. The real test is performance under jamming. The UCAV must execute a plan when a link is thin or silent, then resynchronize once connectivity returns. Why go big when many Western concepts tout smaller, attritable drones? Physics and doctrine. Internal fuel for combat radius takes volume. Internal bays for useful weapons take volume. Sensors and electronic warfare take power and cooling. A larger unmanned aircraft solves these constraints with margin to spare. It is not cheap, but it is relevant on day one against a peer adversary. Cost and force structure then become strategy. If unit price approaches a light fighter, removing the pilot still brings advantages. Higher permissible G in short bursts, lower life support complexity, better loiter endurance, and software-driven upgrades that roll out quickly. The likely model is a tiered fleet. Exquisite stealth UCAVs like Typey up front, flanked by attritable drones for mass and decoys, with manned stealth fighters orchestrating the package. Sensor fusion rounds out the picture. A compact ASA paired with passive RF IR sensors and cooperative tracks from man wingmen lets the UCAV run silent yet see far. In high gain SAR mode, the radar maps targets for precision strike. In GMTI, it cues weapons against movers. With the EOTS aperture filled, it can provide terminal identification without blowing Emkin. Electronic warfare stores, escort jammers, DRFM repeaters, expendable decoys would magnify survivability for the package. Thermal and acoustic signatures, not just radar, are heavily managed. Inlet placement shields a compressor face from ground radars. Nozzle faceting and mixing shrink the hot core signature. Fairings route warm air to blend with the plume. If endurance and station time are part of the concept, IR management is as decisive as RCS. Weapons carriage can be sketched without exact dimensions. An air superiority fit could cram 8 to 10 BVRAMs internally creating a magazine ship for the formation. A strike fit may swap to two to four large standoff weapons or a mixed load of anti-radiation missiles and compact glide bombs. A centerline bay could accommodate long forms like anti-ship missiles if the doors are cleverly split and saw-toothed. Operationally, consider a contested literal scenario. A four-ship of J-35s advances on Emkin, each pair with a Type B flying slightly offset and lower. The UCAVs emit in synchronized narrow bursts to build a composite track file, then go dark and pass data via pencil beam links. When coastal emitters activate, the UCAVs open bays and ripple arms. The J-35s hold higher to prosecute follow-up targets or sanitize the air picture. If hostile fighters react, Type B escorts can cold launch BVRMs from advantageous geometry while staying emission silent. Another play is enabler denial. By slipping through coverage of threatened tankers and AWACS, a stealth UZAV forces the opponent to retreat the aerial backbone that sustains long-range operations. Every kilometer the tankers move back shortens the enemy's reach and shrinks time on station, eroding combat power without a single dogfight. The industrial message is clear. Fielding a fighter-sized UCAV implies confidence in stealth manufacturing, high-temperature materials, digital flight controls, and a software pipeline that can iterate autonomy and EW at pace. The hardware signals a doctrinal shift. Human machine teaming, distributed sensing, and uncrewed first wave risk. Risks remain. Communications will be contested. Satellite links can be jammed or weather blocked. Autonomy will meet edge cases. Maintenance for stealth coatings and advanced engines is never trivial. Yet rapid block upgrades can close gaps quickly. Once squadrons adopt mixed formations as default, the compounding effect of training and software iteration will outweigh early friction. The headline is simple. Typey matters not because it looks exotic, but because it addresses hard problems with plausible engineering choices. Volume for fuel and weapons, control without tails, stealth across radar and infrared, and the power and cooling budget for serious sensors and jammers. It is doctrine-made metal, a signal that future air packages will feature large, 
Stealthy UCAVs as routine members of the combat formation, not curiosities on a parade float. 